So what do you expect when you share your happiness and future plans all excitingly to someone you trust completely? And how will you feel on finding out that that very person has given you the biggest irreversible pain using the very happiness you shared with them? This is exactly what has happened to the family of Khyati Shrasta when a promising life was snatched from the parents whose entire life was planned according to the dreams of their beloved daughter. Hello, Mr. Mysterious family and welcome back to Mysterious Mariam. This is Mariam Ahsan and today we are going to talk about Khyati Shrasta case. Before we dive deep into today's case, let me put forward a fair warning that content of today's video can be disturbing for some of you, so viewer discretion is advised. And if you are someone who is interested in true crime and real life mysteries, do subscribe my channel and share the videos with your friends and family. Let's get into today's case. Khyati Shrasta was born in 1990. She was living in Biratnagar with her family. She was a very bright and intelligent student, always nailing her grades. She aspired to become a pilot. Her parents, Gopal Shrasta and Radha Shrasta, were so confident in her that they moved from Biratnagar to the capital Kathmandu so that their daughter can get better opportunities to fulfill her dreams. As soon as she passed her school learning certificate with distinction from Biratnagar, Khyati then got admission in Kathmandu's Jubilant College and Research Center. Whole Shrasta family moved to Kathmandu and rented a house. The owner of the house was 40 years old Biren Pradhan. Biren Pradhan was originally from Darjeeling, India. He then shifted to Nepal where he became a science teacher at Adharsha Vidya Mandir School, Kathmandu. Biren would sometimes use uh, Shrasta as his surname. I don't know why, but uh, we are going to call him Biren Pradhan for this video so that that uh, there is not any confusion between the victim identity and the culprit. Shrasta family developed a close bond with Biren as they were living close by and Biren would give tuitions to Khyati. Both families would meet together often and have dinner together as well like a very close friend with whom you can share everything you want without worries. Biren uh, then had to sell his house which he rented out to Shrasta family because he was facing some debts because of which Shrasta family had to move to some other area in Kathmandu but their contact with Biren never ended completely. Shrasta was now 19 years old. She almost completed her 12th grade. I think she was done with her uh, 12th standard theoretical exams and only had to give her practical exams. During this time, Biren Pradhan visited Shrasta family on a dinner. I guess on that dinner, Gopal and Radha Shrasta very casually and excitingly shared their plans regarding Khyati to Biren like, like how they were planning to send Khyati to the US for further studies and how they have sold some of their property so they could help Khyati to pursue her further studies without realizing that that secret was gonna cost them a life. Khyati as usual nailed her 12th grade exams with distinct marks. On June 5th, 2009 around 8 in the morning, she received a call on her phone. The caller introduced herself as a representative from a famous woman magazine Wow and congratulated her on winning a lucky draw. As she recently passed her 12th grade exam with distinction, the caller informed her that she had won 20,000 Nepalese rupees and a trip to Nepal's most beautiful tourist attraction, Pokhara. She told Khyati to collect the prize money. She would have to go through some formalities and would have to visit her. Khyati was over the moon hearing the call. I mean, of course, you will be. You are 19 and you got news that you have won some money suddenly and even have won a free trip as well to your most favorite place. Will not be happy, right? She immediately went to her parents and very happily told them about the call seeking the permission to go collect the money. They gave her permission but of course they were not gonna send her alone to just any unknown place. So Gopal and Radha asked, asked their neighbor's son to accompany Khyati to the women's magazine representing the name of this neighbor's son is not mentioned in any online resources. All we know is that he was Khyati's friend, so he agreed to go with her. Around 1 p.m. that day, the duo reached the address the representative mentioned. That girl very warmly met Khyati outside the cafe. 
she introduced herself and told khyati that she was the same girl who called her regarding the lucky draw now i'm not sure about the authenticity of this piece of information but it is said that khyati had to get interviewed by the magazine as well they sat down in the cafe and uh, the representative told her that she had to go through certain paperwork and for the interview they had to go visit the magazine's office khyati was now all comfortable talking to that girl so her neighbor decided to leave khyati there and get on to his work khyati then called her parents to informed about her safety they then went to the so called magazine's office in khushibu a little time went by when khyati was sitting there going through some material when khyati saw birend pradhan in the office she was completely shocked seeing him there but birend gave her some reason to be the part of magazine team birend offered khyati a glass of cold drink which she drank around 2:30 that day khyati's parents tried to call her but she didn't pick up it was starting to get dark and khyati's phone was unresponsive so they were literally panicking at this point then somewhere in the evening gopal shrestha received an sms on his phone some resources said that sms was received from khyati's number some said that it was some uh, different number whatever it is this message was not from khyati this message actually informed gopal and radha about the kidnapping of their daughter and that they had to pay 1 million nepali rupees in ransom for khyati's safe return with a clear warning that they will not get to see khyati alive if they tried to contact police khyati's parents were so terrified because there were some gangs in nepal active those days and they would kidnap and literally kill the victim just because police got involved in the kidnapping case so they took this threat very seriously and decided not to contact police gopal and radha decided to agree to kidnappers terms they prepared 1 million nepali rupees which they saved for khyati's studies the next morning gopal received a message from the kidnapper that he had to come to butwal with 1 million nepali rupees but as soon as khyati's parents reached butwal kidnapper didn't show up so they had to come back home and then they were directed to reach sonali so they went on a 27 hours drive reached the spot but kidnapper didn't show up again so they had to travel all 27 hours back to khatmandu when they were given a new location to drop the ransom money and that was darjeeling india now i am not 100% sure but i think it is easy to move between the borders from nepal to india and guess what kidnapper didn't show up again when they received a fourth location and that was kakarbita so they travel all the way to kakarbita from from Kathmandu and finally kidnapper gave the further instructions on June 17th 2009 that's 12th day after Khyati's kidnapping 12 days i mean just imagine 12 days of uncertainty the kidnapper is already playing a dirty game here they stayed at a hotel in kakarbita for the night that's when radha saw someone really unexpected she was shocked but right now her priority was to get ransom money to the kidnapper and take khyati back home the kidnapper asked them to send their house help ram for the ransom delivery ram with the money went to the decided place during ransom delivery ram heard kidnapper's voice and he immediately knew who this person was seeing his reaction kidnapper realized that he had made a huge mistake he tried to attack ram but fortunately ram escaped after delivering the ransom and even knowing their potential suspect shrestha family set out to kathmandu in a hope that khyati will be home by next day but next day came and went by khyati didn't show up and the phone number they were receiving uh, the instructions from also stopped responding after the whole next day khyati's parents finally decided to contact police police immediately started working they asked radha if she saw or felt anything suspicious or out of the place that's when radha told police that when they were in kakarbita to deliver ransom radha saw birain pradhan in the same hotel where they were staying this substantiated her suspicion because birain had no reason to be in kakarbita as they knew each other very close. closely the house help ram also told officials that he clearly recognized the voice of ransom collector to be of birain pradhan police 
immediately had their suspect so a manhunt biren pradhan was started on june 13 2009 some locals at kabila chitwan informed police about a suspicious carton with allegedly some body remains police immediately collected the body parts the carton contained hands cut into two pieces and two legs cut into pieces of course identity of the body parts could not be determined immediately so these body parts were kept into the custody for further investigation police finally arrested brain pradhan on june 21st 2009 from kushibu and his accomplice 16 year old marina chakya Marina Shakya was a student of Biren who was a former biology teacher at Adarsha Vidya Mandir School. She was waiting for her school leaving certificate result. Biren and Marina allegedly had some kind of relationship. Marina was the one who called Khyati as the representative of Wow magazine to inform her about the lucky draw. And when Khyati reached at the magazine's office, which was actually a rented apartment by Biren, Marina was the one who greeted Khyati. She gave the statement to the police that Biren was the one who planned all the kidnapping and he spiked Khyati's drink with sedatives after which she got unconscious during the kidnapping Khyati somehow regained her consciousness and tried to scream for help scared to be captured Biren put chloroform on Khyati's mouth but allegedly he accidentally overdosed her which resulted in her death He then hit her repeatedly with an iron rod to make sure she is dead after which he mutilated her body with some sharp object and disposed her body parts in three different areas far from each other he attempted to dispose these body parts so far away in an attempt that police would not be able to recognize the victim biren pinpointed all the places to police where he disposed khyati's body her torso was found on june 20 First, 2009, approximately 20 kilometers away from Kathmandu. On April 22nd, high schools in Nepal remained closed while students brought traffic to a standstill, protesting against the brutal murder of Khyati and growing targeting of schools children. People of Nepal were. furious on this horrendous crime on june 24 her severed head was found 19 days after her kidnapping and murder from rainbow forests her head was in advanced stage of decomposition so it was really hard to recognize her just by looking at her face preliminary investigation showed that victim's body was cut into 10 different pieces by a sharp object and that khyati was killed within 24 hours of her abduction It was also found that Khyati was raped many times before being killed due to the overdose of chloroform. Now police had all the evidence and confession of both Biren and Marina. Biren Pradhan when asked the reason to commit such heinous crime, he said that he got addicted to gambling and lost everything in it. He also had a lot of debt to pay when he visited Shrestha family on dinner that's when Gopal and Radha mentioned in front of him about the savings and how they wanted to send khyati to the us for higher studies that is where he decided to commit this crime now it is unclear if uh, biren actually wanted to let khyati go alive after receiving the ransom money or he premeditated this horrible murder since he clearly showed his face to khyati the single judge bench convicted biren and marina on three separate charges in connection with khyati's murder the court sentenced 20 years life in prison meant for Biren on the murder charge and handed down an other 15 years for kidnapping Khyati on the pretext of providing her with cash reward he got another 4 years for kidnapping a girl and for collusion in murder these years were to be served separately so that made to total 39 years of imprisonment for Biren Marina however was sentenced to 20 years life imprisonment on the murder charge along with a 10 year sentence on the kidnapping charge and another 4 years on the collusion in murder and kidnapping of a girl so that made around 34 years for Marina However, Marina has now been released from the prison after her good behavior. She completed her master in jail and I hope that she has learned her lesson. Biren however is still serving his sentence and I hope that he is going to stay there till death. 
Unfortunately, this is how a promising life of Khyati Shrasta was cut short. Shrasta family trusted this guy and this very man killed their only child in the most horrible way possible. And then he made them go to all those different cities for 12 days to receive ransom and disposed the body of their dear child in such a horrific and disrespectful way. How cruel is that? Stay safe. Thank you so much for making this far into the video and I will see you in my next video. Bye.